Hey, before we start, I want to show you guys this mind blowing theory that after Dr. Strange is starting to, you know, gain some steam and I want to show you guys it. The theory is all about the infinity stones. Let's uh, recap where they are and where they came from. The first one was the space stone and that was from the Tesseract, which was in Captain America Civil War. Okay. The second one was the scepter that um, Loki got from Thanos in uh, the first Avengers movie. So that is the mind stone. This is the space stone. This is the mind stone. I believe the next one was the ether, which we saw in Thor, the dark world. And that's that red crazy stuff from that movie. That is the reality stone. The next uh, infinity stone that we saw was the orb and the orb was the power stone. And we saw that in guardians of the galaxy. And this current one is the time stone and the time stone was in the necklace called the eye of Agamotto. Okay. So, and we saw that in the most recent movie, Dr. Strange. So let's take a look at these five and let's mix it up a little bit. We are missing one more stone and look at the first letter in uh, all of these things. We are missing one stone and we're missing one letter H. What does that spell? Where is the soul stone going to be? Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Draw 2. My name is Ravni. Today we're going to be reviewing Doctor Strange and I'll be coloring Doctor Strange. So I watched this movie last night. Uh, I had a lot of thoughts about it and when I woke up in the morning thought I would turn on my camera and I just start talking. I don't even have anything written down. So forgive me if this video kind of goes off on a ramble, but that's okay. At least you can watch my uh, nice coloring maybe. So let's get started. Doctor Strange. This is I believe the 14th or 15th entry in the MCU, in the movies, and I would say it's pretty up there in terms of being one of the best. I think what I really liked about it was the actors, the visual effects, and just the general plot of it was pretty good. Even though it's a little bit generic, I liked the story from beginning to end. I was very entertained by it. By the way, you gotta go see this in 3D. There's no other way to see it other than 3D. So make sure you pay that extra couple of dollars because I think it's worth it. The visual effects are stunning. They're just, I mean, it's buildings folding in over themselves and just like a kaleidoscope of stuff coming at you. It's really cool to see and I definitely think you guys should see it in 3D or else you might be missing out. I like the cast, uh, especially Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. He had the right amount of arrogance and right amount of, you know, just uh, humor too. I didn't expect this to be that funny. It was pretty hilarious that and I also like the character growth from beginning to end. So that was pretty good. Uh, side characters like uh, Benedict Wong as Wong was really good. He's also kind of funny. Um, the Beyonce moment was hilarious. Hilarious. I love that. I liked Mordo, Carl Mordo. Even though he didn't really have that much to do in the uh, movies, you kind of knew that he was a badass character even though he didn't show it as much. Uh, you, you just expect him to be, that he's going to be a major threat whenever they release the second Doctor Strange movie. Uh, Christine Palmer, she was pretty good too. They didn't use her that much, but when she was on screen, she was pretty good. Uh, the Ancient One, I was uh, very surprised that I really liked The Ancient One. She actually, I think she stole the show, I would say. The other thing too is uh, Caecilius, the main bad guy, although she, he's kind of the main bad guy, but there are two bad guys. If you guys know, uh, Dormammu uh, appears in this one as well. He's the one big giant being that they're trying to, you know, they're, they're trying to summon. And Dormammu was okay, thought he needed to, like, I thought he looked more badass in the comics, in the, the design in the comics was more, I don't know, more, more badass, I would say, than uh, what they had on screen. Uh, Caecilius, he was okay. I feel like they could have fleshed out his characterization a little bit more, but you know what? I mean, he was threatening when he was on screen and that's all you really need, I guess. The character arc. Now let's talk about that. Uh, the way that it goes from cocky, arrogant SOV to a superhero, it has very similar beats to, you know, people like Iron Man. Um, you know, he was arrogant and became a hero at the end. Um, Let's see, who else? Green Lantern also had that. So think of Doctor Strange as kind of like a Iron Man and Green Lantern combined. Because in Green Lantern, you have that same thing where you have uh, an arrogant person, he's given powers, he gets trained, and then eventually at the very end of the movie, the person who trains him becomes the main bad guy. That happened with Sinestro, that happened with Mordo here. So it has that character arc. 
And it also has the Iron Man character arc where he's like this millionaire guy thought of thought highly of himself. He gets into a life-threatening accident, uh, finds a way to heal himself, and by doing that also found a way to become humbled and becomes a hero. So it has all of that similarity, so it feels very familiar. The bad stuff, I would say I wasn't as convinced with the like Doctor Strange's growth from being a regular doctor, regular person, to a master magician. It wasn't long enough, I feel. It just went from this to that right away. So, you know, even in Iron Man, uh, there was that moment where he learned how to become Iron Man. I mean, he was building his armor and he learned how to use his armor kind of thing. So there was that growth. But with this one, it's like he went from not knowing magic and then all of a sudden he's fighting Caecilius in the Sanctum. So he went from that to that too quickly for me, I'd say. But that's a really, really minor nitpick. Like I said, they didn't really flesh out the bad guy enough. Another thing that I was disappointed about was the fact that they didn't play any of the um, music in all of the trailers. They didn't play any of that music uh, in the movie, the music is pretty forgettable. Um, aside from like a Pink Floyd in the beginning, I believe it was Pink Floyd. You know, that's the thing with Marvel movies. There's not that um, music that's memorable. Not like Star Wars, where you just keep humming uh, the song, like the music, even when you're not watching it. Or even, you know, like Batman v Superman had pretty epic music. Man of Steel had epic music. And the Wonder Woman trailer that just came out, there's that Wonder Woman theme that appears in there. Doctor Strange did not have a musical theme. I connect with music and I don't connect with the music in any of these movies. Uh, actually, I believe Marvel Studios is making it a point to only use music as a background and not have it to be a highlight. So, I mean, the only thing I can think of is the Avengers theme. That's the only song, like that's the only theme that I can remember off the top of my head. So yeah, I wish they'd used more of the music from the trailer, especially the second trailer. Overall, you guys, I really like this movie. And if you guys are a fan of Marvel Studios and the MCU, you will have a lot of things that you're going to like. There's a lot of Easter eggs in this one. All of the magical relics that are in the Sanctums. Um, there's a couple of characters, for example, that are, there, there's a lot of Easter eggs. So if you guys are huge fans of it, I suggest you guys go to YouTube and find the uh, Easter egg hunting videos. And definitely stay for the mid credits and the post credit scenes because those two, they set up the future Thor movie, Thor Ragnarok, and also the future Doctor Strange sequel. So um, I liked how Doctor Strange finally gets to meet Thor. It kind of just establishes that they are part of the same universe. And also uh, Mordo finding that, uh, that magician, the one who uh, got himself unparalyzed and taking his powers. And it's like the step towards making Mordo the bad guy in the sequel. I like the fact that you don't really need to know the other MCU movies to appreciate Doctor Strange. It is its own movie and it has a great cast, it has great story, and it has great visuals, best of all. I mean, like all of the incantations and all that stuff. Some dancer choreographed all of the um like the the body movements for the uh for all the incantations and spells. Um those are really neat. Another thing I wasn't fond of is the fact that they're using magic now. And the thing with magic is anything is possible. So say for example, when you think of the next Ant-Man movie, the Ant-Man sequel, you're gonna think, why don't they just solve this problem using the Eye of Agamotto, you know what I mean? So magic is so powerful that I feel like it's almost a cop-out and can be used as, as an excuse to fix any type of problem in the MCU, especially now that you know that the Eye of Agamotto has the ability to turn back the clock. I feel that's an excuse that you can use for every single thing that happened in the MCU, you know what I mean? You can just turn back the clock on anything uh, in order to solve the problem. So that's the one thing that I don't like when they start introducing magic because you can always use magic to solve whatever conflict there is. So that's all I have to say about Doctor Strange. Definitely go see it while it's still out in 3D. Thank you for watching my review. I hope you guys enjoyed my drawing and please stick around to the end of this video so that you guys can click on the annotations that I have here on the screen. If you guys are curious about the equipment that I use to make my videos, I have links to those in the description box below. Clicking on those links helps to ensure that content creators like myself are supported so that we can continue making good stuff for you guys free of charge. Question of the day, spoiler time. Let me know what you guys think of Doctor Strange. Let me know in the comments below. Feel free to spoil because you know what? I've spoiled a lot already in this review anyway, so let's have a discussion. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you guys subscribe. Here in this channel, I show you guys how to draw your favorite characters in easy to follow, simple step-by-step -step instructions. And on occasion, I do movie reviews just like this one. So if you guys do like what you see, come on over and hit that subscribe button that's just below this video. And if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it a lot. If you guys liked it, commented below or shared this with your friends in social media. And speaking of social media, don't forget, you guys can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and on my website, draw2.com, where you can get a coloring page of Doctor Strange and Carl Mordo 
and a whole bunch of other characters from all of my tutorials. Again, you guys, all of those links are down below. Finally, you guys, thank you again for watching. And as always, stay tuned for more so you can learn to draw too. I'll see you guys in my next video. Where you can get, where you can get a, where you can, there's people walking around, where you can get and call, car.